Well, welcome. And my home is a mess. Whoa! Oh, that is quite the entrance to a house. When you walk into my mother's house, you're going to be greeted by about a five and a half foot, six foot climb. Now we got to go brawl into the other room. This is pretty extreme. Oh, my God. I've seen a lot of hoarded homes. This is one of the worst I've seen. I'm kind of pissed off. Do you do this to everybody? My relationship with my sister is over after we're done with this. Look at it. You need to go away. I don't want you in my life. I want you gone. What she did was unforgivable. I don't want to see her before this. I don't want to see her after. I get a sense that Sherry doesn't trust me at all. Oh, I'm upset. Everybody lies to me. She thinks you're all are stealing from her. But you need to understand, we're not here to mess with you. I'm not going to be able to replace any of this. I'm going to need stuff, and I'm going to turn around, and it's going to be gone. My name is Sherry, and my home is a mess. There's a bunch of trash. There's a bunch of junk. There's a bunch of good stuff. It's just an accumulation that's disorganized. I'm Matt. Sherry's my mother. This, I can't even stand up with the way things got moved around. When you walk into my mother's house for the first time, you're going to be greeted by about a five and a half foot, six foot climb, straight up. I can only move so fast. I've basically blocked off everything so that people can't break into my house. <gasps> Jeez, that's a hole. There's a hole here now. If they do break in, they turn around because it's like they throw their hands up and go, ah. Oh. The hoard in my mom's house, uh, it's a lot of thrift store items. There is a 25 cent rack at a thrift store. That whole rack is leaving the store with her and she is going to be getting her senior discount on it. In other words, what you would normally spend on a single pair of pants and maybe a shirt at a uh, chain store, she can have a full wardrobe that can clothe us for three years. This is that bag. Now, how did this bag get in here? This is what I can't figure out. There's stuff in here that shouldn't be in here. I moved out of my mother's house about five years ago. I went, we found a good opportunity for me out in California. I went and I did that. It was fun. I was there for about two years. And I thought, you know, hey, I'm part of the hoarding problem. I should come back and this should be improved. Oh, God, here's a brand new blanket. Cool. Let me put it with the... Oh, feel it. It's nice and soft. So I came back about two years ago. The hoard was worse, and uh, I tried to improve it, and there was very little I could do to improve it. <laughs> toothbrushes. Well, I always buy toothbrushes, and you know, because you always have to throw them away. Just put them somewhere. Living in this house is just a place to store my stuff, and there's too much stuff, OK? It's all right. I mean, I don't have a problem with it, because I adjust to whatever and I can make myself comfortable in whatever situation I'm stuck in. Wait, look, this dress? Yeah. This is the one that I get buried in or burnt in or whatever the hell we do. It is what it is. I'm Lauren and Sherry's my mom. The last time I was in my mom's house, that was eight years ago, I was 22. It was just packed up with a lot of trash and a lot of things, so I am thinking that it's going to be a lot worse.
My mother hasn't paid a full mortgage payment in maybe two years. If she doesn't clean up the house and she doesn't feel attached to it to pay on it, the bank will foreclose because they're a bank and she will end up on the street, I will end up on the street, and we'll both be homeless. When I was a child, I lived with my mother, my brother, my grandmother, and my grandfather in my grandmother and my grandfather's house. I think when my mother started hoarding, they were very old. They had my mother a lot older than most people their age had, and their health was in decline. My grandfather had dementia, and so my grandmother was mostly taking care of him doing that, and so she really didn't rein in things, watch my mother, what she was doing, watch us. It was very sad. You know, their last days were in filth, and I think that was very wrong. It was very shameful the way that I grew up and embarrassing. I knew that other people didn't live that way, but it was just how I grew up. And so we just dealt with it, me and my brother. I'm still surprised we weren't taken away by CPS because it was very noticeable how we grew up and how we lived. My sister and I are both in high school when we moved into it. Then the washer broke, and the gas line got removed, and we don't have heat in the house, so then the pipeline broke, and you can't really do anything to clean stuff. This is when it escalates. And then it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse over these past just these few years. Now, is there anything else you want to get after ice cream, or? Are we just going to get ice cream and I then go home? Let's just go get ice cream and go home. It's been a tiring day, hasn't it? My relationship with Matthew, I guess, is OK. You know, he, he supports me. He's taken over as, what, the man of the family? You go ahead and get out the coins. I'll tell you how much we need. We only need about 10 minutes. I mean, he's always been like that since he was small. Okay. That's like, let me get the door for you. Thank you. Oh. That one. <laughs> I think the best way to explain my brother's codependency and love of my mother that's a little unhealthy is. When I was about six and he was about four, he made this picture of a house that he wanted to have when he was an adult. Mm, it's good. Oh, yeah. Right next to it was a grave, and that was supposed to be my mother's grave. And he put that there because he always wanted my mother to be next to him. So even when he was a small boy, he was very obsessed with my mother. My relationship with my mother and my brother has always been strained. My mother never wanted children. I was an accident, and I'm not going to sugarcoat that. She has always told me to never have children, that they ruin your life since I was a very small child. So I have never felt wanted. And she has always favored my brother over me. She's always told him that how smart he is and that he's going to be president and just how wonderful he is. She's never done that for me. I had not talked to my mother for about a month and a half. And, you know, that house is packed to the brim with stuff. My mother is almost 70 years old. I did not know if something toppled on top of her. I didn't know if she got trapped in a room. I did not know what happened to her. Her cell phone, every time I got to it, just went to voicemail. I left her many voicemails. So, of course, eventually I got so worried, sick, that I got her a wellness check. When Lauren did what she did, it was very traumatic for me. If I had a gun and they came in the house and woke me up from a sound sleep, I mean, what do you expect at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning? I'm going to rush and answer the door? Now, if I had woke up to people standing over me with flashlights, things would not have gone well. I mean, seriously, I could be dead right now.
My relationship with my sister is over after we're done with this. I never want to see her again. I don't want to see her before this. I don't want to see her after. She is one of the worst people I've ever had the misfortune of meeting in my life, and she is directly related to me. I do not like her. She does not like me. She does not like my mother. My mother finally cut her off as a relationship. You want to know why? She got drunk one night, and she called the police for a wellness check. My sister did a wellness check on my mother. My mother went down at 2 o'clock in the morning, woke up from dead silence. Six-foot-tall cop is afraid of a little teeny old lady crawling out of a cage. She doesn't understand what's going on. We're here for a wellness check. What the f is a wellness check? And the cops, they stopped. They couldn't get up the goat hill. And you know what? They say, this isn't normal. You shouldn't live like this. Well, this could catch on fire. I'm sorry I'm mad. I'm sorry I'm swearing. You bring up my sister, I'm going to be as polite as I can. My sister wants something. She wouldn't be here if she didn't want something. Every time she calls us, she wants something. The main reason why I'm here is I grew up in filth. I do not believe anybody should be living in filth. And I would like to see my family not be living in filth anymore. So that is why I'm here. Plus, it's my family, and I love them, despite how they treat me. How I feel about Lauren being here, I don't want her here. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want to deal with my sister. And the main reason is because she lies. I'm going to be nice to her. I'm going to lie to her face. I'm going to be like, oh, that's sweet. I'm not going to hug her. Even if it's like, oh, this is the happy ending. We're never going to see her again. And if we ever see her again, it's too damn soon. And if there is a hell, she'll be there. She'll be waiting for me. I've made my own little toxic environment that keeps people away because I don't have a reason to invite anybody over. The one person that I allowed in my home that I treated like a member of the family stole a bunch of stuff. And then after that happened, I started blocking off stuff so you couldn't get in. Sherry, how are you? Fine. David Tolan. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I'm Dr. David Tolan. I'm a psychologist and an expert in the study and treatment of hoarding disorder. May I come in? Um, sure, if you can. <laughs> well. Whoa! Oh, boy. Yeah. OK. When I first got to Sherry's house, I was struck by the fact that I couldn't even get one foot into the door. Wow. The house was so full of stuff. I've seen a lot of hoarded homes, and this is one of the worst I've seen. Maybe I spoke too soon about coming in. Right. So it's going to be tough for me to get in there and for us to have a chat. Is there another way to get into the house besides this? It's over there, but I'm not sure that's going to be much better. I see. Would you mind if we took a look at that? Sure. Here, why don't you show me where it is, OK? Oh, it's right here. OK. Yep. It was a little bit better than this, but yeah. we made it. Yeah, okay. here. See, there's a little room. OK. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so Sherry, tell me what I'm looking at here. What, what, what are we dealing with? This is my collection of stuff that turned into a mess, I guess. It's just an accumulation of things. Right. And yeah, there's a bunch more trash than honestly I remember. But I haven't been in this room for a couple years. It's very difficult to even get into the living room. We had to shimmy around a lot of stuff. 
The smell is pretty overpowering of dust and mold and things like that. It's going to be a difficult time clearing all this stuff out. This stuff was up against that door. I see. Okay. So this got moved here. here. It it got thrown because we were trying to find a way for everybody to get for in. us to get in here. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I blocked the doors off so people couldn't get in. Yeah. Because I had a neighbor that I invited in like family, and she stole all my expensive jewelry. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I could trust her. You can't trust anyone. Sherry makes a lot of excuses for her living conditions. She says that she needs to have things this way for protection, for safety, for security. And she seemed very scattered, very defensive, almost bordering on paranoid. I get the impression that Sherry is quite impaired. But you guys are going to fix me, apparently. I don't know if it works that way, but I think what we can potentially do is help you clear out the house and right. get it to be a point where it's more comfortable for mm -hmm. you. And hopefully start to make some behavioral changes, which is a piece of what I wanted to talk about. Do you think you save too much stuff? Probably, but that's because I'm afraid I won't be able to replace it. So how well do things in the house function, like the kitchen, the bathroom, and so on? Well, they really don't, but I've never had a kitchen. What do you mean you never had a kitchen? When I bought the house, there was a metal sink, mm -hmm. metal cabinets, yeah, and there was an old, like, 30s, 40s, 50s stove and yeah. an old refrigerator. Because every penny that I had went to buy the house, Yeah, I couldn't replace them. Yeah. OK? So the kitchen's non-functional. The kitchen has never been. How OK? About, how about bathrooms? Well, that bathrooms one up there, there worked. But something happened with one of the pipes. I see. So let me make sure I understand. Do you have a functioning bathroom in the house? Just upstairs. Upstairs that functions. Well, you can use it. You can flush the toilet and use water. Though from there's the sink. no, but there's not. No, we use like if you were homeless. Think if you were homeless. Yeah. Did you ever live in a house that had, you know, outdoor plumbing like porta johns or something? I mean, no, I grew up. My it, grandparents' house, they had like a two holer. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm different, and you're, I see your face, and I'm going, <laughs> you know, this is not easy for me. Yeah. Let me put your mind at ease over some things that you've mentioned here. You're going to get no judgment from me on this. I've okay. seen, I've I seen know, lots I've, and lots I'm of cases like this. I'm watching your eyes. And... I get a sense that Sherry doesn't trust me at all. She's coming in defensive and ready to pick a fight with me. I suspect that Sherry thinks that I'm going to take away all of her stuff or that I'm going to tell her that something's horribly wrong with her. And so she's looking at me side-eyed the whole way. Do you do this to everybody? You I say, mean, seriously. You say do this. Because I'm kind of pissed off, OK? Mm -hmm. Our society has gone from we had all these public toilets and all these bathrooms and everything, and now that we're so down on homeless people, mm -hmm. you know, they don't deserve to shower. They don't deserve to take a they don't deserve a place to pee. So let me let me ask about this house in particular. This house it, right now, uh, I can't take a shower. I mean, I suppose shower. if I took the stuff out of the shower, I could. Right. But I don't but know if the water there. works because I haven't tried it. Is that something and you'd like to change? I mean, do you want to be able to shower here? It would be cool, but I'm not that. Yeah, we well, may be able to get you there. I mean, well, yeah, I thought that's what they said, but I didn't know that I would be grilled and griddled on this. At least I have a roof over my head. Yes, that's true. You know, and a lot of people don't have that. I mean, I don't heat my house. You know, is anybody concerned mm. about that? You know what so, I mean? So let me ask, what do you do for warmth? I mean, what do you do for heat? I mean, I'm I'm electric, cold I actually cold I have an electric winter. blanket, so I hope none of my electric blankets disappear. So let me come back but around, because I, yeah. I, I want to understand a little bit more about this house. I mean, it sounds like you don't have a shower that you can use. You don't have a kitchen that you can use. You're and, using uh, yeah. electric blankets for I've for never had warmth. a kitchen, though. Right. Everybody acts like I should have a kitchen. I've never had a kitchen. No, it's, and I'm it's your fault. Messy, you don't have you know, to. You and don't have I to. can cook however I want, OK? Right. And people have not starved, as you can tell, looking at us. Right. Sherry, can I point something out to you? You seem testy. Well, I'm upset because I wasn't expecting to be grilled on stuff. Sherry, you understand I'm, I'm on your side here, Well, right? let's hope so. Anyway, yeah, the, the bathroom, as far as normal people, since I'm not normal, are concerned is non-functional. Mm -hmm. It could be functional if I moved stuff and did stuff, or if I had the money to fix things. Right. That's the problem. I don't have the money to fix stuff. Right. So once it doesn't work, you just put stuff there. 
and that becomes okay. more storage. Which is, yeah. So maybe that's a bad idea, I don't know. I just got to the point where yeah. I don't care. I think the biggest challenge for Sherry is going to be understanding that she has to change her behavior, not just clear out the house. She's going to have to be willing to let go of things. Oh, she's going to have to be willing to stop her acquiring. And she's going to have to start making decisions in an efficient and appropriate manner. And I think she's going to have trouble with those things. I certainly get the impression that Sherry suffers from a very severe case of hoarding disorder. That's characterized by an inability to let things go and the building up of clutter in the home that makes it impossible to use the home for its intended purposes. So I tell you what I'd like to do. I'd love to see more of the house. But before we do that, I want to bring you outside and meet Corey, our cleaning expert, OK? And maybe all of us can take a look together and make a game plan, cool. OK? That all would right. be great. Let's step outside here. And here he is. How Corey, doing, how are you? Colin? Good, good, good to see, see you. Hey, I'd like Hi. you to meet Sherry. Sherry, Hi. this is our nice cleaning expert, you, Corey too. Chalmers. Nice to meet you, Sherry. I'm Corey Chalmers, an extreme cleaner that specializes in biohazard and hoarding. So what I thought we might do is talk a little bit about what we want to do next. Um, so I think the first piece is we want to take a look at the house. I'd like to get a sense of where you sleep and how the house is functioning. And Corey, I'd really yes. like to get your sense of, of what you see there. Sounds good. I should tell you, it's, it's going to be tight in there. OK. Um, so there may have to be a little shimmying to get through there. I'm used to that. All right, should we take a look? Yes. OK. You ready? All right, let's go. After you. Okay. Uh, you weren't kidding, Dr. Tolan. Yeah, it's real tight. Wow, that is quite the entrance to a house. You really can't get into Sherry's house in any normal way other than climb. Oh, God. You better be careful because it's slippery. Okay. Okay. I don't even know what my first step is going to be. Oh, my Well, gosh. it was so, the black thing right to the here. black oh, thing by the tennis shoe. And you used to be able to get through here. It's worse and worse. And when you do get up to the top, now we got to go back down to our bellies and crawl into the other room. This is pretty extreme. You all right, Corey? Yeah. All right. OK, then move this differently. So. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I know. I'm army crawling through all this stuff, trying to get under the doorways, and I'm wondering how much longer are we going to have to crawl through this before we can stand up. It's a little like cave diving. If we got through the entrance, we can get through this. Yeah. Well, like I said, everything's all moved, so. OK. We made it up. Oh. So Sherry, where do you sleep up here? Back here. So the sleeping. Yeah. Is in this room here. Back there. Back I there. I just have like a little place. I'm not really seeing a space to sleep. Yeah, I know. There's not a bed. I just made There's a no place. There's no bed. Like, yeah. No. So what do you sleep on top of things like this? Is that? Stuff. I make, yeah. I just do with what I have. Does Matt sleep in this room? Yep. And there is a bed in there. And there you is a bed. You just can't see it. Well, mattresses anyway. Two more bathrooms. There. And everything's and working? No, you saw the water. So where do you go to the bathroom? Well, you can use it. You just have to use water and stuff. Okay. But I've just left it because the water's not coming up since we had that polar vortex. So this bathroom was like this when you bought it? Pretty much. The stuff, Yeah, well, it too? didn't have the stuff that was in the toilet, but the, the darkness that was in it, yeah, I never could get it really cleaned out. Yeah, I can't see much, but yeah, it's, it, it doesn't look like it's a, a very functional. Well, yeah, but that's yeah. your idea of functionality. It really amazes me that anybody can live this way. The fact that two people are living this way is even more astounding to me. I guess over the years, you just start to get used to it to the point where you'd barely even notice it anymore. So are you bringing all this stuff in? Is Matt bringing some of it in? Uh, he's got, his stuff is mainly computer stuff, musical stuff, but we've got several rack mount boxes. Just percentage of who's bringing stuff in. Oh, it's me. 
Okay, and you're yeah. ready to change, yes or no? Just well, give me a yes or yeah, no, give yeah. me a yes or no. Are you ready for change? But yeah, it would, uh, and I'm concerned because I want Matt to have a decent place. And it'd be nice to have a decent place. This could be an absolute beautiful house, but it's just I've mm -hmm. never had the money. I tell you what, because this is not a great place for us to have a conversation, let's go back downstairs, mm -hmm. we'll go out, and we'll meet Matt, okay? And, okay. and let's talk with him too. Okay. All right, after you. Thanks. Sorry, because there used to be like a foot square place to walk. I mean, there's bunches of trash, trust me. And I know you're concerned, do you know what I mean? Mm hmm But yeah, I'm fine. I'm always fine. Yeah. No matter what, I, I don't make know it. if I see it that way. You make the best of what you can. You getting through okay? Yep. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. Careful. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. Right. Oh. Hey, Matt. Dr. David Tolan. How are you? Nice to meet you, doctor. And this I'm is Corey good. Chalmers. Corey, nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. It's wonderful to meet you guys. Y'all coming out here to help my mother? Absolutely. Thanks for being here to talk with us. I mm -hmm. really appreciate it. Now, you live here too, right, Matt? Yeah, I do live. I live on the second floor in the room next to her. So you've had a first-hand look at what's going on. I mean, tell me what your both hands. Tell me what your thought is about about this house. I mean, what do you see happening? Well, here? the thing is that she doesn't trust people. And this is just a way to wall it all off, and it was done cheaply on the cheap, and uh, it's just made the house go bad. She doesn't value the house. She values the stuff that's protecting the house more than the house. So you're thinking this is all about kind of a need for safety and a need for security? What you said, safety and security, that I believe is much more important to this than anything, because like I said, in the last years, it's escalated, absolutely escalated. But you got to wonder, how safe is this house? Well, well I'm not looking at it that way. <laughs> Because I look at it like it's a little island and there's, you so know, it's, it's just protecting me. It's safe for her. I and know the thing if is that, somebody else came in like it's you, not. it's not, but it's yes. It's safe for her from what she's afraid of, but in reality, she's creating a lot more safety issues for herself well, and you. Right, oh, no, I really? understand that. Well, because the thing is that I try to throw trash out and stuff, and what do we do every time I try to throw trash out? I want to stop and look through the bag to make sure nothing important is getting thrown away. Who's the person you trust the most? You. Do you trust me to clean out the house? Well, hopefully, yes, and them, but and over I the just, yeah. How many years have I come back and I've tried to help uh, you now? Uh, I'm not sure how long you've been but back, but over a year. Me? Yeah, but it's just difficult. One question, why are we here? To help me. Help you what? Clean out the house. Get and my life back. what does that mean back. to you? What does clean out your house mean? If you won't let him throw away a bag without looking through well, it. Well, I, I don't know how this is going to work, and you're the mm -hmm. professional. If you have to talk about, think about, look at every single item, and you have a 4,000 square foot house that is this full, can we do that in four days? Hopefully. But well, answer the question. Can we, if you have to look at, I don't touch... know. I don't know, OK? I know. But I know you know. That's what I said. You're the professional. Right. Well, We're going to have to see. It's going to require you to put some trust in people. We'll talk about this when we get started on the cleanup. But I okay. just wanted to see where your head was at. Yeah. No, my at head is day, at. Help, help. What do you want your house to look like when we leave? Well, better than what it is. That's a. Yeah, it's a big, that's there's a, a big lot, thing. There's a lot of room there. What do you really want to well, see? Well, I don't really know. I just want it to be kind of nice and, I guess, livable by everybody else's standards. He had asked, what do you want your house to look like? And I would ask, from my perspective, what do you want your behavior to look like? Well, I quit buying stuff pretty much because, I mean, I got plenty of stuff here to wear in that, but I was getting stuff so if I got a job that I'd have something decent or I'd have something clean to wear or whatever, and I really haven't bought much stuff right. recently. So do you want your behavior to look like that in the future, or do you want it to be different? Oh, it'll be different, OK? I'm not going to be, they keep saying everybody reverts back or something. You know, I've already had been traumatized and PTSD or whatever else. We'll just see what this does. Well, we don't want to traumatize you. No, so I don't think I don't yeah. think you're going to. You're afraid of people taking stuff, and you're telling me that there's important stuff in there? Look, whatever you guys got to do, just quit making me feel bad. I, I, I'm not trying to make you feel no, bad. No, but that's exactly what's going on. But, we're you not know, here for that. I know, we're here okay. for me. We're not so here to make you feel bad. So let's just try to Yeah, we're not here to make me. you feel bad. We are definitely here to help you. Tell me what your two top goals are for the next week. Honestly, I don't know. I don't have preconceived notions. I don't know what's going to happen. It's only a few short days, so we'll have to see what we can do.
So, Lauren. Yes? I understand you haven't been here in how long? It's been about eight years. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. We just need you to take a look and, you know, see what we're all up against. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So go ahead and take a look and then we'll talk. Okay. I just come through here? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't know if we could even get through here. Oh, wow. This is definitely worse. Let's see if we can get through here. I don't even know if I can get through, but we'll try. So, Lauren, how does this look compared to what you're used to? Um, it definitely has grown by, I'd say, about five feet. Really? Yeah. Let's try this. Careful now. Oh. I don't want you hurting yourself. Oh, this is how I grew up. You grew up in conditions like this? Yes. Yes, I you did. You had to climb over things like this even um, as a kid. Yes, yes. It wasn't this steep, but... Yes, this is exactly how I grew up. I grew up in filth. What's your reaction as you look around now? I mean, as you see this, tell, tell me what you, what you think about it. I'm just ashamed and I, I just, I mean, I can't believe my family is living this way, but it's just very sad. Nobody should be living this way. I can come with you. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll accompany you up there. Okay, sounds good. Corey, you want to you you hang out here? I'm good. All right, I'll you... see you when you get back. All right. <laughs> Let's head up together. Okay. All right. Wow, this is so much more packed. It's a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah. I'll try that. Are you okay? I think so. Okay. I can just get a foot up here. Whoop. All right. Ugh. Lovely. I guess this way is our only way. All right. Well, then we'll take a look up there. Okay. So this is about 10 times worse. And, oh, that's a workout. Yeah, it is. It's not easy getting up here. Oh, my. Yes, that's my room. Oh, that's your room. No, you could get through this when yeah. I was here last. Ooh, there's something rotten. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, my God, I don't even want to see the bathroom if it smells like that. You want to take a look? Oh, my God. Oh, does that bathroom toilet work? I don't think so. Oh. They don't have a shower anymore? <sighs> no. Where do they shower? Where do they go to the bathroom? It was not like this eight years ago. I can't stay in here. No, I wouldn't recommend it. This makes me very sad. Here, let's step out and I want to talk to you about it. So tell me, what do you experience as you look around here and you see how your mom and brother are living? It's 10 times worse than I expected. Really? It's worse than my grandmother's house that we lived in when I was a child. We always had a, a bathroom. We always had a, a shower and... Why did I go to the bathroom? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Animals shouldn't live like that. What do you think happened to your mom? I do know she keeps these walls to protect herself. She's always told me that from what I don't know. What did she tell you? There's just She just tells me that she likes to keep herself protected. With stuff. All right, you ready to get out of this house? OK, let's go downstairs. Here's what I want to do. I want us to meet with Corey and your mom and Matt. Okay. And let's start talking about what we're going to do, okay? You need to do that. Okay. Let's head on down. Okay. Ooh. Deep. Ooh. to see you. 
I, uh, so Lauren and I just had a chance to look through. And Lauren, do you want to talk a little bit about I told you you couldn't you get saw? through the house. I didn't think it was that bad. And you don't have a toilet or a place to shower. That's all right, Lauren. I'm <laughs> fine. It's not. That's a well, you know, you got to do what you got to do, OK? And sometimes you got to a bucket. So yeah, you were fine, Lauren. That's why you couldn't come that's here. That's not okay. That's I love you both, and that's not okay. I thought it'd be like to there, maybe, because it was like to there, and now so it's to here. The, you can't even get into rooms. So the thing about it is, is like I keep telling everybody, in the last two years, it has escalated to the point where it is highly unmanageable. Would you agree? The thing, the thing about it is, people were trying to break into the house. This keeps people out. Trust me, it does. I know I because care. of what you did. Okay. I think what Lauren is saying is she's really worried about you. No, she's not. Trust me, she's not. Okay. I mean, what, what, what did you do that really did it, Lauren? Let's, can we just get on with this? Because mm. it's painful yeah. at this point. Sometimes it's important for us to talk these things out a little bit. <sighs> Matt, you mentioned that there was something that Lauren did that Well, I'd made like you to mad. hear it from her. What did you do to Sherry? What'd you do at 2 o'clock in the morning while you were drunk? What'd you do to her? I was not drunk. Oh, I was yeah. worried. You were worried. Cool, but what'd you do? I was trying to send her messages, okay. Facebook messages. Mm -hmm. You're trying to contact her, and? I finally, after a month and a half, sent a wellness message. OK, so you sent a wellness check. You want to explain wellness what check. that means? Can you please stop? Well, what did they do? Do you even know what a wellness check does? Yes, Do you know that I could you. be dead like that woman in Texas because of what you did? This week in Texas, some lady Neighbor called, door was open, person didn't even go in the house, shot her through the window. And you're going to send who knows what. You know After what they did? You so have they, a let me, contact. Let me jump, that's a, let me that's jump a in. police Hold officer. On, let me, let me it doesn't in. matter. Yeah. You don't know who it is. It's a police I officer. Did, did you do, how would I know? Let me jump in. There seems to be a lot of bile here, a lot of viciousness. That, Why so much it's hatred? It's not vile or viciousness. What she did was unforgivable. She called a wellness check That's on you. That's right, and I should have called Sherry, one on her. Sherry, let me tell you something. If you were my mom, I would call for a wellness oh, check, too. Oh, God, I just want to scream. Yeah. Spit you're, flames, you're do in, something. You're in danger here. I am not in danger. Nobody cares about me. Trust me. I'm trying to do something for me, and you're going to wreck it. And it's just, it's just, I'm just tired. I'm sorry. I really need something to drink. I'm going to vomit. In order to successfully get this house cleaned up, we're going to have to bring the members of the family together to cooperate and make collaborative decisions. We're going to have to get Sherry trusting the process and we're gonna to have to teach Sherry how to make decisions and let go of things. If we can do those things, I think we'll have a successful clean out. If we can't, then I think even if we clean out some of the house, it's just gonna go right back to the way it was. My mother's a hoarder and my brother's a hoarder, absolutely no doubt. And they're very codependent. One of them might talk the other one out of getting rid of things and then I'll have to get in the middle and, it might be, it might be pretty bad. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. How are you doing, Sherry? Fine. Good. We got all kinds of help here for one thing, and that's you. Cool. Okay. We have GI Hall, which first of all, these guys are all vets, so Yay. thank you all for thank your service. Thank you for your service. Honestly, great to have you guys here helping. Sherry, we also have some professional organizers here. I need okay. that. Yes, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have your family. Sherry, we also have Dario here, which is Matt's best friend, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for coming, Dario. Great to have you. And we also have Dr. Tolan here. Right. Mm. As you know. <laughs> right. One of the things that we saw this morning is some of the conflict. And I want Dr. Tolan to talk about that, because it plays an important part in why he and a lot of us are here, OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that's going to be really important here is behavior change. You're going to hear me mention this over and over and over again over these next four days. It is important that we clear out the house, yes. 
but it's also important that we clear out some of the mental clutter as well. Because unless behavior changes, I think we're going to find that the problem keeps building up again, even after we're gone. What are your goals? Oh, geez, do we have to do this? I hate goals. I'm probably the one person in the universe. I hate goals. Well, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 20 or 10? And honest to God, no matter what I've tried to plan, it just turns to crap. But I'm going to let you guys take charge, and I'm going to try to trust you. And it's going to be, like I said, a treasure hunt. So let's talk about what the plan is. Okay, we have to kind of learn how you think, what you think is trash, what you think is worth keeping. So I think the There's easiest way trash. is to bring stuff out right. to a sorting area where mm -hmm. our lovely organizers can help us. Yep. And then you can come out and mm -hmm. you can tell us what you think is worth saving. Dario, you're kind of new. You haven't even been in the house yet. What are you thinking right now? Um, well, I haven't seen in the house even from the windows. So I think it's important to be able to see inside a house. Again, you have so many people here for mm -hmm. you, for both of you. Okay, let's take full advantage of that. Right. Are there any questions? Okay. Let's just get on with it, and as we go, we go. All right, so you guys ready to get started? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go. So Sherry, I wanted to bring you out here to show you this. This is just the clothing that came out of the kitchen. Right. Let alone the whole house. This is just the kitchen's worth of clothing. Yeah, I know. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to let a big chunk of this go. No. No, the hort. Right no, now, no. no. We're, not right now. Nah. Nah. We're not talking to you. No, no. Let me tell you something. If we throw her clothes away, this is going to heavily retrigger her hoarding. This is what's going to okay? happen. And because that's why I let me, let me pause. Dying. Matt, why are you jumping in like this? Because he's trying to protect time... me. If you're nice, everybody runs over you. If you're nice, everybody takes advantage of you. They mm -hmm. steal from you. They do all kinds of stuff. Remember, our job is to be all of us against hoarding, not you and hoarding no, against us. No, it's all of us against you. And that's exactly, it's me that that's you're trash. against. That's, no, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to make you realize We're not that against that's you. not no. mine. I just picked it up to look at it. Get rid of it. That smells like mold. I don't want you here. Well, this smells like mold. That's so if fine. this smells like mold, the rest of it smells like mold. Cool. The whole house smells like mold. So you need to go away, OK? I want you to leave. I don't want you in my life. I want you gone. So we're back at the car. Yes. OK, we had a conversation about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Tell me where you are, where things stand with the car now. The valuables are out of the car. The valuables are in the closet like I told you they'd be. Nice and locked, not in the way for today's clean out, which was a big help. OK, so you got some valuables out. Yes. The car still looks pretty filled up to Well, me. What, we just happening? did that to cover that. So what this should be is a Sherry's many changes of clothes. Yeah. Our plan is to go somewhere this weekend and de-stress. OK. So this is part of the process for her, because I have Two changes of clothes in here, and a couple pairs of extra underwear and socks. Okay. That's, it. That's the most I ever travel with. But this seems like there's too much stuff in here to even drive the car. Dario, can you come in here? Remember the conversation that we had, Dario? What, what's your recollection of where we where things stood with the car yesterday? Uh, as far as I understood, they were going to just clean everything out of the trunk, out of the car. It was going to be like a regular car cleaned, and then they were just going to take in whatever they were going to need for the trip. <clears throat> that is my goal. That is my goal with Cherry. Is that something that you could work on now, you think, to clear out this car? Could I work on it with Sherry now? Yeah. If we have the time, I think we could. Yeah. Can we make that a priority? Uh, if you want to make it a priority, we absolutely can. Yeah, why don't we do that? I think we need to get this taken care of. OK. OK. Come on over this way, Sherry, over this way. What? Yeah, come on over here. So basically, instead of, you know, working on the car today or tomorrow, can we take a little bit of time to just do it now? God, Matt, what are we going to do? Uh, I just so can't. Basically, really? the big conflict here is I like to take a change or two of clothes. You take a lot. Can we at least find something, like, you know, one change or yeah, two for we you that can, we can? I don't even know where anything is at this point. And the few things that I had left are broken and damaged. Why not take proactive action now? Why? Why, why so sit here and ruminate? Difference, what difference is it going to make, huh? It's going to get your car cleaned out so that you can use it. Uh, well, you know what? I got to stay here 
and I'm going to take advantage of the dumpsters and stuff to try but Sherry, to do something. The wonderful thing is they're moving stuff into the house right now. Yeah, we're gonna, and then we'll we're here. going to do this later, Sherry. So this is the thing. If we're going to do it later, can you do me one favor? Just do it now. No. What? I have one goal for you. I want you to find one outfit. So that way, and you can put it in a place in the car, and we can take it out, and right when we're done with it, we can put it back in. Can you find one outfit in the trunk, please? Gosh, I don't know if I can. Well, can we do this? Because it's the well, small steps. Well, I guess steps. we're going to have to. We don't have to, but it, we're going to do this God. later anyway. It's just I'm gonna being try forced to, to do you. something. Encourage me to do what? Nothing? You know, encouraging me to be even worse than what I am? Well, I think, Sherry, I think Matt's trying not to enable, and he's trying to be not, strong for you, which is good. I, you know, no, it's that's really, really great. I don't know. know what what kind of outfit. What are we going to do? Well, Sherry, we're going to go out this weekend. We're going to do a lot of walking. That's the thing you got to prepare so for. So I need to prepare for that. Yes, and, we're and I, in this bag, you should have something stuff. that's nice. I have a dress. Because this is washed. But, a dress yeah, would work. I don't want to wear that there. OK. And see, this see. is the stuff that can stay in here for that, and I can wear that as my shirt because that's perfectly appropriate okay, for where we'll yes, be going. Okay, yes, that's for where we're going to be going. <laughs> okay, let me try to figure out. My pants are in the car. That's okay. Car. You go. You got to go to get this. Yeah, well, they're not. And you the know. big thing is, and we don't have time to do this right now, but the big thing for Sherry is she brings a lot of identical-looking bags. Mm -hmm. Is that this causing too much stress for you, Sherry? Yes, the whole thing is. So, Forever Sherry, why don't we, why don't we take damaged. a little break, OK? No, it's fine. But I knew it wouldn't do it in four days. And some stuff we just can't do. And but, I'm such no, a horrible they, person. Sherry, this right. is something but, I need you to realize. They the have worked test. with you every step of the way, from the small things like making yeah, sure your shots okay. are in the shade instead of in the sun, yeah, to the I really know. big things like making sure that you but have I'm, I'm just so like the food you want demanding. every day. You, you can't seem to quite get out of victim mode here, Sherry. I'm sorry. That's maybe what I am is yeah. a victim. But you're maybe you don't need to do that. Well, I don't know how to move on then, because every time something else happens. We're not going to be able to work on that today. Matthew, I don't know what we're working on. I know that my pants are in the other car. That's where my one pair of pants are because all the other pants that I would wear got thrown away. And I was trying to be nice about that. You know, and I know we say things, but they're in boxes. We're going to make that work. Hundreds yeah, of pants and we're work. looking to one into another right. car. Can I, can and I hopefully, that? hopefully. Sherry, we can work on this later. You can keep working point. if you want or you can take a break for now, whatever you want to do. No, I just got to find whatever quick, it is because I just started situation. sticking stuff in here so I have something. You know, I'm just a horrible person, so we all should be happy. Now, how did this bag get in here? My mom doesn't really feel attached to the house. If the house gets taken away, basically my family would be homeless. And I'm trying to help. Get rid of it. That smells like mold. The whole house smells like mold. So you need to go away. I don't want you in my life. I want you gone. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. It's good to be back. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, Lauren. <laughs> yes. It's nice to see you here. Thank you. Frankly, I'm surprised to see you. After the verbal beating you took yesterday, I'm sort of surprised you came back. Well, I'll she doesn't be here for my family. She doesn't get that, but this is just I been always do. from what she did to now. What I want the family to be thinking about is that ha to have a, an assumption of good will that a family works well when everybody assumes that everybody else is there for good reasons. This is what always happens. I'm always beat up on. Yeah. 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 Always. It doesn't matter what sort of goodwill I try to give to my family. It always comes to, I have done something wrong, no yeah. matter what yeah, I try to I do for my family. So family, let's try to let that lie for now, OK? And let's try to understand that Lauren is here to help, and we need to be appreciative all, of her help. All I try efforts, to do is okay? love my family. This is a big, big project. And it's a big project in terms of cleaning out the house. And I think it's a big project psychologically. This is a very unhealthy family with a really troubled dynamic. It's going to take a lot of work on everybody's part 
for us to straighten this family out and to straighten this home out. Mom, why must you feel like you need to put these in the car? Because of you. You're here. We have everything and going in the, have... in the U boxes. Yeah, yeah, I know, but All I want to be able stuff. to find them. But why do you feel like they aren't going to be safe in the U-boxes. Because so all you're doing is you're junking up the car. Look, I don't care, Lauren, OK? The house is not going to get all the way done because we're wasting all this time doing this. So if you could let me do some of my little things, I've been letting a lot of stuff go. Yes, you have. And I'm proud of you. Not, yeah, well, I don't care what you think at this point, OK? Sure. I'm beyond Remember that. the assumption of goodwill, right? Well, I don't uh, think She's it never is. had goodwill for me. It's no, a, that's not true. So, Sherry, let me point out sort of where we are at this point. Mm hmm So I need you to stop fussing with the clothes for just a sec. Oh, OK. All right. So you've been trying to discard some clothes. I see this is your discard bin here. Mm hmm But this is your keep stuff here. Yeah, I know. So I estimate you're getting rid of, what, about 10% of the clothing here. All right. And you want me to get rid of but 98%. today well, is a different case from yesterday. What I'm, hang well, on there, Matt. One of the things that we know about family systems is that when you poke them, people start to get defensive. And that's exactly what we're seeing in Matt and in Sherry. Our being here is upsetting their equilibrium. It's challenging their status quo. I'm wondering, do you need all these clothes? Do you really have a use for them? Or could some of them go? But I do not have money to replace stuff. So why should I get rid of perfectly good stuff that I will use? Because until I get a washer, I need clothes that are clean. Right, but you see what you're doing is instead oh. of washing clothes, you're just you're just picking up new clothes and new clothes. Because and new I clothes. don't have a washer. The trick is we got to make hard choices here right. in order to make things actually better. I've tried. Once it's boxed up, it's not going to be that bad. I mean, I've got My concern right now is the save rate. Just to know the U pods are getting quite full with the save stuff and we're not even out of the kitchen. So if we keep saving at this rate, I don't know where the stuff is going to go. Yeah, OK. Well, somebody had said, well, they could bring more in, but. But those aren't staying. But yeah, they still but have when to When we leave, those are. Yeah, I know. So where I is know. all the safe stuff going to go? I'm going to put it back in the house, apparently. That's my concern. Oh, wait, what that's bag? that big bag. It is. What bag? Yeah, this. We we're on throwing this away. You know, away. it's got rat in the bottom of it, right? I don't care. So let me, so, so walk me through I what's I wanted this here. bag because it's good. Well, they're saying there's rat or something in it. Yes, there's yeah. tons. Don't, Not don't tons. touch it, Mom. Ew, don't, don't. Sherry. All right, guys, you you know better than me. Okay, Go ahead. well, Sherry, why did you no, want the bag? No, it's fine. Because yeah, you got to talk about it, Mom. The reason that I want the bag is it's heavy duty, mm -hmm. and it's great to put stuff in. So I know this sounds stupid, but I do think her idea of using this for trash is actually a really good idea, as someone who's had a lot of trash bags ripped. Yes, yeah, so but we are categorizing things in boxes, and we're putting everything in. in. We're going to be able to get a, a proper. Um, what, but there what? is a life after this. And if this is the stupid thing that makes her comfortable. I know, I know that there's a life after this. Right. And that's the I point. That's why she's I think you're, I think you're getting called. into enabling again, yeah. Matt. Keep it. No, it's fine, Matthew. Throw it. Everybody Keep say it away. No, 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 Matt, no, 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 seriously, Matt. What Matt. are you doing exactly? Keep you're it. enabling. Are you going against this on purpose just no. to prove a point or what? No. I was going against her because no, have you, Matt, I, it's I told fine. you about the ripped garbage bags. I didn't care about that until you said garbage bags in there. It's fine. Everybody's right. I just, I need to stop this. It's making me physically ill, OK? I want to learn more about the relationship between Sherry and Matt. You know, why is this young man, 27 years old, still living with his mother, not working, and just continuing to engage in this, what appears to be codependent hoarding situation? What amazes me is you threw this away. Yeah, and then she comes over here and says, I want it. And you're like, you're right, you're right. Nope, it's, she was going on, I'm going to use it for clothing. That's a bad idea. I'm going to put a trash bag in there. I love it. I never Why is that a that. good idea? Again, does. does anyone no. in America use these as trash bags? Hell no. Why do you think I didn't think of it? So why why should you guys? What's wrong with trash bags? They rip as they're coming out of the house, but hey, if we can move through there, it's easy. You know, that's the thing. I'm it's, thinking of what it would have been for before, not what it's for currently, which is trash. It's not for trash currently. It's It belongs in the that's trash. That's what I'm saying. Right. But uh, you got to yeah. talk to him. I'm, yeah. I'm baffled at the enabling. I yeah. am. Like, uh, frustrating. You, you, so. you seem to be in some sort of cycle with your mom where it seems like you, you are encouraging her to save things sometimes and sometimes encouraging her to discard things. I can't quite figure out 
what the what the relationship is. Well, the whole is thing here. is is if she wants this, and I have to hear about it three times tonight. Thank you. All right, I don't want to hear about this three well, times tonight. But you may have to, Matt. I mean, this is a painful process. She's letting go of stuff. Oh, God. You don't want to encourage her to keep stuff just because you don't want to hear about it. We've got to challenge her. And I mean, my whole plan that here... That may mean that she with, spirals no, up really, and she gets upset. No, really, my whole plan here with this house is if she dies, I throw everything out. I wouldn't have to hear a damn thing. I don't believe that. You don't believe that? I don't. No, you, I no don't believe that either. That. No you would never get rid of anything that's mom's. You love her too much. I think you've made a really bad assumption there, Lauren. Oh, you're obsessed but with But you're mom. living in this house, too. I'm Your aware. room is messy, too, so oh, I don't yeah. believe that. I think you suffer from some of this as well. well that's fine, but the good news but is do that's you? Would, do you admit that? Of course I'm a hoarder. OK, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm a hoarder, and I enable her. She came over here, and whatever the hell she was doing, I wasn't paying attention to her. She dropped what she was doing to come over to this thing, OK? We're all kind of forgetting that at this point. To us, it's a stupid bag. I don't know what the hell it is to her. Instead of saying, keep it, you should be like, Mom, this is a stupid, in your words, bag. We need to get rid yes, of it. You should never bag. ever say, keep it, because that is enabling to her. That it. is giving her keep an it, idea. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. You want it? That's not what you do, you because like you're away? reinforcing Mom. Yeah, but the good news is, she threw it away afterwards. It's, it's like you're not even getting what you're saying to her. You're not you're I not told her to keep it. If she exactly. wanted it, she had an option to keep it. It didn't feel like she was forced to throw it away. A lot of the stuff, like, she's very passive about it, and I don't like that. She's like, OK, just throw it away. This time, she took an active step in it. She took two active steps in it, and I think that's a good thing. Is that really a problem? Yeah, mm -hmm. it yeah, is. Yeah, it really it is. is. You, you aren't understanding what happened. Yeah. OK, so her being more active and throwing crap away is a problem? Well, we're, we're really talking about you right now, not her. Yeah. That's fine. The, the problem, so. I think, is sending her a mixed message and not just encouraging her to get rid of stuff by pulling things out of the trash and handing them back to her and saying, keep it. Okay. That sends a mixed she message that out. I think is She gonna... wanted to keep it. She Matt. said, fine, to Matt. you guys, angrily. Yeah. I'll get rid of it. I gave her an option to put it back in a happier manner. She did get rid of it after that. Still, you should have insisted that that's not safe. That's mm -hmm. not good for you. Instead, what you said, OK, that's your responsibility. I'm clearing my hands on it. You are here also taking decisions for her mm -hmm. that are going to indirectly uh, uh, affect your life. Well, this isn't but gonna affect my life. It is going to affect your life. You live with mom. I know exactly why you're afraid because All you've right, seen, sweetie. you've seen your whole entire life how mom treats me because that's how I treat her. I talk to her very directly. This is not how things should be. So you are deathly afraid that she's not going no. to love you. Yes. Lauren said something really insightful, which was, Matt, I think you're afraid to stand up to mom because she'll stop loving you. I think there could be some truth to that. When you look at enabling behavior, it is often driven out of fear of some kind. The person who is enabling is worried about what will happen if they don't enable. And I wonder whether Matt's worried about what would happen to him or to Sherry or to the family if he stopped supporting this behavior that she's doing. everybody good morning. good morning all right so we are actually in the kitchen yeah which is impressive this on is the, the floor room. on the floor this is the room that we had to crawl over to get through the, right. the doorways that's really impressive yeah so we're making good progress here that's really good mm -hmm. now you may have noticed somebody is missing today Corey's under the weather he's not going to be joining us today but we're going to soldier on now as i walked into this room i couldn't help but notice a whole bunch of black trash bags here, and I wonder if you guys could tell me the story here. You do it. So these bags, all of this, and this is all singular items, and it took forever. I had to grasp that like three or five times. A lot of the stuff was the stairs that's going up right there. There's yeah. the platform and then up. 
So you can walk all the way to the second floor wow. without stepping on a piece yeah. of trash. Way to go, guys. Well, That's really yeah, impressive. But it, yeah, took, it took, what, two hours? Two and a half hours, two, two hours, 15 minutes. This was not even with sorting. And we didn't sort anything. So you guys put a lot of work into this. Yeah. Wow. But I just was like, I want to get on with this. So I'm many... happy. I hope you keep it up. All right, yes. let's talk about today. So today is day three of our clean out. And this is a big push day. This is where we need to make the remainder of the big push into the house to get the stuff cleared out, sorted, and get the trash out, mm -hmm. and get the good things that you want to save, mm -hmm. saved. And I'm going to trust these three. Mm -hmm. You and know, my real If I is, have to walk I want away, to have three you have separate to cleanups understand. going and just let her do her thing and just mm -hmm. trust the other two are going to be taken care of. That's it. Yeah. That's the goal for the day. Well, let's see what we can do, all yeah. right? So let's get out of here and let the GI Hall guys get in here so they can start doing their thing, okay. all right? Yes. All right, let's head out. My mother says, Matt, do you want to keep that? My brother will not say no, but I can tell from his face he does not think Lauren, that it's I'm a good idea. I'm going to explain this to you one more time. I can throw this stuff away for her. But I did... need her to say yes or no, because this is not going to be done in four days. I can't be wishy-washy with her. If she learns you... to say yes or no to stuff in two more days, this has been worth it for me. I, she, look at how much stuff she's throwing away. This wasn't like this on day one. This is great. This is a vast improvement. Is she throwing it away everything? Matt, no. Matt, Matt, bring it down. I'll bring it down. Bring here's, it down. here's the big takeaway. This is a really big improvement. Yes, but at the same time, these, oh God. look how oh dirty God. they are. Oh, God. Look, oh you God. cannot use Just... this. Lauren, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And she said this. Lauren, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Because you can't listen to Lauren, reason. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. She said, Matt, what should we do with this? And you said, Mom, you decide. Lauren, no. here's you the thing You could have easily said, no, this goes uh, you're the not PlayStation keeping this. Hands to sell, Please, those are knives. Let me have them. They're at least safe with me. Those are disgusting. Okay. Yeah, let they're me, disgusting, but I don't all, trust you. First of all, let me hear from Lauren. What do you see happening here? What's the I see that he is enabling her. He is the only person mom will listen to. You're both hoarders. Lauren, That's right, Lauren, enabling. we are, and this so are you. This is growing. Can I say one more thing? Go for it, bitch. There were other oh, things. Whoa, 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 hang on. Matt, you're being out of line. She's going to say there, the same no, again, but I'll no, be right. No. You're being out of line, Matt. The whole aim here is to have less stuff, right? I know. But I need okay. you to be strong for your mom. And that sometimes means saying, Mom, this stuff has got to go. This I've been telling her not that. not healthy for you. But when there's something new that she hasn't gotten rid of a lot of, she needs to feel OK doing it first. Even when it's garbage? I don't garbage? think you understand. Lauren? Shut up right now. I would love it if you would leave. No. I would like you to get that garbage out of there right now that you put in those boxes I put and see. I in the boxes. You don't need this stuff. Look, look, it's already damaged. It's nasty. Nobody, you are grown adults. You do not need a toy like this, especially broken. This goes in the garbage. You can't, it's not salvageable. You cannot give this to Jerry, a child. Jerry, do you trust Lauren to throw Buzz Lightyear away? Okay. Throw it away, Lauren, if it'll make you First happy off, and shut your this mouth. Yeah. Lauren seems like a cat that's been run over way too many times. It just can't get any flatter. She just keeps taking the abuse because it's what she knows. Why did you bring this bitch back in my life? I would love it if you would leave at this yeah. point. No. No, because you need to hear this. Yeah. No, guys, this is fine. He can say this stuff to me without you being let's here. Let's make sure that we keep hands to ourselves, guys, OK? It's OK. He's touched me a million times when he doesn't like what I say. Oh, for Christ's sake. That was a reassuring shoulder thing. Let's not do reassuring shoulder things right okay. now, OK? This is how she's grown up. This is what she's used to. This is why she left. 
And to her, it's just normal. And it's sad to see. It seems like you guys have a lot of animosity between you. Yeah, and it's going to stay that way for the rest of our lives. And there's no way you will ever be able to fix it. There's no way any of this is going to help. There's no way any doctor on any planet will fix it. She'll be dead, I'll be dead, we'll be mad at each other in hell. something on your mind. Yeah. yeah. I just want to leave, but I know I can't leave for her. I'm glad her. you're here. They've been too damn nasty to me, and... They are pretty nasty to you. <sighs> Every day, I just... It's harder for me to come here, and I just... <sighs> just really hate me, and I don't know why. They've hated me my whole life. All I've done is love them, try to help them. Why, the only person that feels that way about them, they just treat this way. They beat up on you. <laughs> yeah. And there's no one else for them besides me. <laughs> I wish I could say it's all gonna be okay. It's not. It's, it's been not. this way since I was a little girl. Yeah, you're very brave to be here. I don't know if I'm brave, stupid maybe. I say brave. Thank you. Honestly, I'm surprised Lauren didn't just wash her hands of the whole thing. The amount of verbal abuse she took yesterday was unthinkable. And I'm surprised that she's willing to hang in there and help out. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Day four. Corey's back. How you feeling, Corey? Better. All right, <laughs> good to have you back. So Corey, good what's the plan? Here. Well, there was a lot of progress made yesterday when I was gone, so good job on that. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to continue with that speed today so we can get your rooms cleaned, okay? That's the biggest priority still, is getting your rooms done so you have a safe and what? Functional, yes. oh, functional that's place right. to live, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so quick decisions. Let the guys do what they're doing up there. Let right. the organizers do what they're doing. That's fine. Perfect, let's Just do let's it. Let's get through it. Yes, All let's. Right. All right, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. I'm upset. About what? Damn, son of a bitch, everybody lies to me. Everybody lies, takes advantage, and you know what? I really like you, but I just not happy. Not happy at all. I'm not gonna be able to replace any of this. I'm gonna need stuff, and I'm gonna turn around, and it's gonna be gone. And you guys are going to be gone. And I'm going to be left with a mess, like always. So Sherry, what? And I'm tired of cleaning up messes. And I made this mess. So tell me about what's got you upset. It doesn't matter because nobody cares. It just doesn't matter. Nobody Sherry, cares. I'm going to tell you one more time. You Look, can just stand. leave me out of it. No. They're just, oh, it doesn't matter. Sherry, just stay with me for a minute. burn it. What happened? You're in the room that she needs to sort through, and I'm saying she can stand outside the door, and she doesn't even want to do that now. I don't need any help. Yeah. All she's got to do is just stand outside the door and see all the trash leave. That'd be good. That's, that's the plan. Why, that's why I hate these people. That's uh, the plan. But that's not what she wants. That's, I don't know what the hell she wants, but the thing is that it's got to get done. And she thinks you're all are stealing from her. She thinks, here's honestly what she thinks. She thinks you're taking the stuff out of there and selling it. I don't think Sherry has ever had anyone do something nice for her. So building that trust and letting her see that what you're trying to accomplish is actually something good is almost impossible. She sees it as a threat. She thinks we're gonna steal from her. We're taking everything that's important and valuable and we're not. We just wanna empty out the trash to give her a clean home. Okay. Do you not like today's plan? Is that what you're Well, no, upset because about? I, they're going into my, my room. It's got all these synthesizers and somewhere there's a Bible I can't remember. 
remember the German everything Bible, that's but, but you understand, been, Sherry, that they're I looking out for it, right? And yes, but why don't they do it? Everybody, well, we've got this plan, and this is the way it goes, and this is how it's supposed to be done, but it, just because it works for one person doesn't make it work for everybody. Yeah. You seem to have this narrative of your life, which yeah, is that everybody is messing been. with you, including us. Oh, God, but you need you to understand no we're idea. not here to mess with you. I know you're here to help. Me. Right. Okay. So, but you keep and playing out the same story of your life over and over and over again. They keep saying, well, you're going to get to go through. You're going to get to tell them what to keep and what not to. Well, I realize we're under a yeah. time crunch. Right. Just do the math. But we wasted how many days? We had one whole day that was entirely lost. There's. There's, the there's four days, four days of cleaning. Which yeah. one was and wasted? Had, it and wasn't you've had the a full time staff. But, but, you're, but gonna... you see, you're taking little bits of information and you're making them fit your narrative that everybody's here okay, to mess okay, with you. Okay, okay. Do you understand know, that we're yeah, not here to mess with you? I know, but just, you know, I'm just concerned. You know what's really because wasting time is me. this. Me, yes, I know. This. And that's because what. Because guess what? I'm not up there cleaning, I'm not directing. Okay, okay. Because we're chasing you around the neighborhood. I just needed to walk to cool off. I know how to take your mother's thing. But here's, listen, listen, wait, 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 listen. On one hand, you say, I wish I wasn't here and you could just do it. No, but I can't. But then we say, we're going to do it, but we're going to save this, this, Fine. and this, and what? you freak yes, out. Yes, but they keep telling me that they're going to do stuff. Like, I would like the extension cords and the wires and the chargey plugs. All the Because, like, in the us. bathroom, the bathroom plug does not work. Okay. And Very it's probably easy. because of the wire. Did you, tell us, of did you tell us electronics I and cords said, are safe yes, on the first yes, day? Yes, yes, okay. the jewelry. You know what I mean? I know that I had just tried on a bunch of clothes. Seriously, I never try on anything. And I tried all these things on so I wouldn't buy a bunch of stuff that didn't fit. Yeah. So that I'd have things to go out for interviews and stuff. I never saw any of that stuff. You know, which is all right because I know when I get back to things, I'll be able to go and find a few pieces if I need them. So we have about okay. two hours now. Let's so go. So can we get to yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Sherry is so mistrustful of everybody. I'm not optimistic about how things are gonna go going forward. So this, we really would love to make into your bedroom. Right. You know what I mean? I understand. And so they've gotten all the stuff out of the middle of the floor here that was obvious trash. They saved right. quite a few things outside. But now this is all the musical stuff, synthesizers. Yeah. And we need direction because there's a lot. This stuff is, is non-negotiable, OK? But tell me why it's non-negotiable. It just is. Or to sell it all, give me a number of what you I think. I to be able to sell all of these things, including the ones that aren't in here anymore, it's about $80,000 to $100,000. And that's after I clean and restore them, but that's essentially a free process. It's just a lot of waiting and bleach. These synthesizers and all these old, old computers and things that are in there, and he puts a value of $80,000 on these things, and that's after he cleans them. I mean, come on. OK, what do you think it's worth, Corey? I think it's worth going in a dumpster so you can have a house that's very right. safe. Now, that was a reassuring path, but seriously, we're not doing that. What kind of person would rather have junk, old computers, old keyboards, than a bed to sleep in? This is how bad they have this disorder and how they've adapted over time, that they just they can't appreciate anything normal anymore. OK, so we're going to go downstairs and finish what we can do down there then, but this is how we're going to leave it. OK. All right.
Wow. Look at this, a washer. Ooh. And it, you don't have to go and downstairs a stove. to use it. <laughs> and a refrigerator. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's great. This is amazing. Well, it was just a few days ago that we had to crawl over eight feet of clutter just to get through that doorway there. Right. So this is a big difference. Mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah. Huge difference. Amazing. It's almost unbelievable, really. No, it is. It's it's amazing. There's more to see, so. Well, this is this is way more than I expected. This is how you should enter a house. Now you can walk into your house, not crawl into your house. At the end of the cleanup, we were able to get rid of three 40-yard dumpsters and four dump trucks. So about 20 tons of stuff. There's probably another 20 to 30 more that they still need to get rid of, unfortunately. But that's still pretty good progress considering the struggles that we have. All right, so there's a couple more things we want to show you, obviously, that we were able to accomplish this week. So let's head upstairs, okay? okay. And as you go by over there, you'll notice another little surprise for you. Cool. Oh my goodness, that actually looks wow. beautiful. Wow, this is amazing. Look, and, it's fancy. And the fruit isn't rotten or brown. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Walking through the house was a trip because it was, this isn't a joke, it was literally cleaner than the day we bought it. Wow, look at the floor. You can see the rug. I do think that this is a really good step forward. We're gonna keep working on stuff to make it even cleaner safer and more functional. This is just really nice of you. Thank you. Seriously. Sherry, do you have no tears in your eye? Yes, and I don't cry, so <laughs> that's kind of funny. Well, I mean, that's I good. really genuinely don't cry but for it's much, okay. but no, it's you guys have been really this good. This might to be me. the first time she's been happy to be in the house in It's years. probably the first time that anybody has done this much for me. Let's address what we were able to accomplish on your crisis list, we'll call it. Okay. Okay, you had some electrical issues. We were able to hook up the electrical, so your mm -hmm. kitchen is all working now. Great. We were able to give you a washer. That's right? amazing. That's you have like a hot perfect. water heater. Wow, that is hooked really? Up in the basement. Thank you, thank you, you thank you. You have a new refrigerator, like we talked about. I also have a $100 Jebbia's Market gift card, wow. which they donated to you guys for groceries. That's amazing. They to have fabulous it. food. That goes thank a long you, way at Jebbia's. That's like three yeah, months of groceries. Yeah, like, that's like a lot. No, really. It really is. We had a plumber come out and assess everything. He's going to come back tomorrow morning after we leave, mm -hmm. hook up hot and cold water into your kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, you're going to have to work on this bathroom. Mm -hmm. It was too involved for us to be able to provide that for you. We mm -hmm. did buy a toilet, so mm -hmm. if you have a plumber come back, they can hook up the new toilet, okay. okay? But we did everything that we possibly could for you while we were here. Cool. But we do have one more room that we want to show you, and that's okay. the door behind you. Oh, wow. Okay, I wasn't expecting this. This is the start. You have a yeah. clean room. This is wonderful. So in order to give you guys both a bed, we only had one bedroom to do that in. So for right now, you'll be sharing a bedroom, but you guys promised me that you were gonna keep working on your rooms. Okay? Yeah, we are. So one piece that I wanna talk about is the aftercare mm -hmm. bit. It's important for us to think about what we've done in these last few days as the beginning, mm -hmm. not the end. So it's the beginning of working on the house. You've got a lot more work to do. Right. And the thing that I keep coming back around to is behavior change. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of behavior change, but it's not the end. I want to make good referrals to you and to you too, Matt. I would encourage you both to get help, and I'm going to make sure that we get you the best referrals that I can. About aftercare, um, sure, I'd love to find somebody that I can work with that can work with me. One way of thinking about this family is that you've got three kind of damaged individuals, Sherry, Matt and Lauren. And you have damaged relationships among those three damaged individuals. That's not the sort of thing that's going to get undone in a matter of days. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of work for these people to heal. We appreciate all of you being here. Absolutely, OK? She really did try to make sure that everything that was important was, you know, 
Thank you. So I know you did. No, it means a lot. And I appreciate you coming up, you know, because I hardly get to see you now, so. Hopefully this is not just a, a new start for the home, but for the family as well. I think that moving forward, our relationship will still be tense. I don't think that we'll ever get to that I love you, huggy, feely, touchy relationship. I will just continue my hardest to be there for them. Good luck. Oh, that's it, guys. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your Thank, Thank you. you so much. See you later. See ya. Right. Good luck to you. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> Best of what you can. You getting through okay? Yep. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my coat made it. Careful. Hi guys, Corey Chalmers here from Hoarders. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the Sherry episode and just some of the difficulties that I faced that I don't really typically talk about on the show itself. I don't know, okay? I know. But I know you know, that's what I said. You're the professional. Right. Oh. We really do get dropped into these um, locations with really no plan. So we have to really quickly make a plan, including all logistics of how to get dump trucks, dumpsters, recycling bins, or whatever the case may be, uh, to the location pretty quickly. How many we'll need, how quickly they have to be turned around, where they will park. And so within a couple of days, we have to come up with this plan. And it's not easy. Some places, like Sherry's house, you're dealing with back alleys, side alleys, busy front streets. And so that's the first thing that we have to tackle. The second difficulty on this particular episode with Sherry was the codependency between her and her son. What amazes me is you threw this away. And then she comes over here and says, I want it. And you're like, you're right, you're right. It's difficult enough to work with a single hoarder, but when you're working with two that are fueling each other. Yeah. I'm baffled at the enabling, I yeah. am. It makes it extremely difficult for myself or the doctor to break through and really get them to understand the points that we're trying to make about this disorder. Well, this is all the musical stuff, synthesizers. Yeah. And we need direction because there's a lot. This stuff is, is non-negotiable. Okay. But tell me why it's not negotiable. It just is. Another problem was the value that they saw in these electronics. Or to sell it all, give me a number of what you I think. I was to be able to sell all of these things, including the ones that aren't in here anymore, it's about $80,000 to $100,000. We were really getting hung up on that one bedroom where it was full of old electronics that really had no value. And because there was nothing we could do to prove that theory, um, that it really wasn't worth anything, we decided to just leave the room as it is and move on and tackle different parts of the house. Sherry's house was extreme. As you know, as soon as you open that door, you're met with a wall of clutter, trash, electronics, clothing, everything you can think of. And so the first thing you have to do is literally climb up five, six feet, where you're, you're literally against the ceiling, and then you have to crawl on your belly to get through. This is one of the most extreme things I've ever seen, and to imagine that both Sherry and her son were doing this is really unbelievable. I'm so glad we were able to make a huge difference in their home and their lives, and hopefully they're maintaining that today. 